Welcome to Room Service. I'm Sarah Richardson. What could be better than a bedroom that captures the very essence of summer? Not much, as we give a plain country retreat a hit of island style. With casual accents that add exotic flair, an artisan's personal stamp that creates the most delicate ceramics, and a games table for lazy afternoons. We're dreaming of open water and bright blue skies, and it's only on room service. What a great view and what a terrific room this is. I'm standing in the master bedroom of a country house. It's about 100 years old and this room is about 20 by 20 feet square. An incredible size with windows on the south and west. I think I'd just never leave this place. It's so bright and airy feeling. Right now you'll notice all the walls are painted just primer white. And there's been a little bit of experimenting with colors, but no final color has yet been selected. So it's my turn to give this a try and see what I can do to bring it all together. I think the room feels a little bit empty right now and somewhat sparse, and that's probably due to the proportion of the room overall. One of the things I'm thinking about doing is moving this bed. As you can see right now, it's tucked underneath the slope of the roof, which is good because it saves space, but it's a little bit bad because the bed is sitting out from the wall, the will fall off the back and you'll hit your head if you get up in the middle of the night. So instead I'm thinking about moving it over in front of the windows here and doing something we'll have to consider a headboard so that the pillows don't fall over the back but maybe so you can still access the windows at the same time. Now that would leave enough room for a seating area because I think this is a terrific room to be in in the afternoon when you've got the sun moving along, great place to come and get away and read. We want to focus on the important elements. We want to think about lighting. I think some drop fixtures from the ceiling would be really whimsical, maybe something like a, like a Chinese paper shade. We also want to think about linens and accessories and inexpensive pieces of furniture that we can bring in here, maybe that I can do some painting and some adjustments to, to create a really unique feel. I want it to be energetic, I want it to be bright and happy. So I'm thinking that since it's close to the water, we want to be inspired by all different shades of water. So I'm thinking one part Mediterranean and turquoise and crisp white and one part lake with cobalt blue and a whole range of everything that reminds us of the sky and sand and summer. But when I'm done, it will feel like summer all year round. Whether lakeside or seaside, summer style is all about water as we create a palette to refresh the senses when temperatures are on the rise. Imagine the crisp cool of the lake mixed with the smooth touch of turquoise, a Mediterranean element for our lakeside cottage. It's a bold mix of our favorite hues that are as refreshing as a cabana on a pristine white sand beach. It's cafe style mixed with seaside chic because when water meets sky, it's all about the blues. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a progress report on what's happening with my blue themed bedroom. Now, all along I've said I wanted to do sort of shades of cobalt and turquoise, holy, that's a squeaky door. And the thing is that when I was out looking for furniture and accessories, I keep finding that everything has this real lakeside feel to it and it's more preppy than I want it to be. All along, I really wanted this bedroom to have more of an exotic Mediterranean feel. So I've stopped by, this is a warehouse that I know of, and they bring in stuff directly from India and Indonesia and Morocco. So I'm hoping it's gonna help me out with that more island-inspired, Mediterranean-inspired look that I'm going for. Well, first impression is that I'm seeing lots of wood, but also hits of blue and white, like these ECAT cushions. Now, these are made in India, and the process is actually done by tie-dyeing the warp threads, which run this way, and then when the weft is 
run through it, you get this soft overall uh, patterning on it in this cobalt blue. So definitely on the right track here. Here's another one beside me, sort of softer shades. This is looking a bit more like indigo kind of denim blues. Now one of the things if you're thinking about a country place is you want life to be really easy. So I think we have big wall space in this room and I could do a whole long board of 10 or 12 of these hooks. So you never have to worry about a closet. In fact, there is no closet in the room. So we might as well make it really easy to keep stuff organized with these sort of whitewashed hooks, which are in the right feeling. Here is, this is another ECAT panel. Oh, look at this with a woven band across the bottom with this, there's my turquoise color there and some sort of reds and blues. Now this is the sort of thing, I think this is, this is an antique one and it's from Indonesia. So absolutely beautiful. This is more of a piece that you would want to use as a wall hanging or something that you would drape over the back of a sofa, perhaps even use across the bottom of the bed, but you'd want to handle it with care, I think. But this would, obviously contributes so much to the look of our room. So we'll have to have that one. Oh, this looks exciting. This is batik and it's quilted. The backing is a solid sort of softer tone and the stronger indigo with two tones of blue, which was exactly what I was looking for. The interesting thing about this is you could use this as a casual cover over a sofa. It's a little bit more durable than this antique panel. I think it would look terrific across the end of the bed. It would, it just sort of makes it feel like summer. This definitely gives it that um, exotic feeling that I'm looking for and will give it a jolt of color. I think after I use these two pieces, I'm not sure that I'm gonna wanna add too much more color. Maybe just a few hits, think about what's gonna happen on those walls and incorporating some other accessories that really support this. But otherwise, we're gonna wanna go white. And here is a screen, this is a folding screen. And to me, this feels tropical. You can either use it to create sort of a dressing area or you can always flatten it out and use it as a headboard. I'm not sure what we'll use it for, but we'll figure out a use for all of this stuff and place it in our bedroom. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. From bland, pure white to intense sky blue. To me, this wall color looks like the color on a cloudless summer day. And I think it's incredible what it does for this room. It just gives it such energy. Now you'll notice I only painted one wall. Now it wasn't because I was being lazy. It's because I love the sort of tent-like effect that you get when the sloped walls, the cathedral walls are still left white. And then we just have this strong blue on the end. So I'm delighted with that. Now I have to show you all of my fabrics and my treasures that I got when I was out shopping. So here are my two throws. You'll remember those. We'll put one on the bed, maybe drape one. Of course, these beach mats. Doesn't that say summer to you? What else have I got in my bag of treats here? Oh, this is fantastic. This is a Tibetan silk throw that I got when I was in New York City, and I think it's fantastic. This right here is just the perfect example of my color scheme in this room. Now, one of the other things that I'm working on here is some seating, because I said that there was enough room in this uh, space to have a little seating area. So I found a pair of chairs at auction. Look at this fabric, can you believe it? It's sort of a Provencal fabric. Anyway, they've got these weird casters on them. I picked them up for about $25 a piece, and then I slip covered them just in white, denim because you know I think you can't go wrong with white denim and I'm going to sort of put them under this window because this is the south facing window and you get beautiful summer breezes coming in here and I have an idea in mind that's going to make this space all about hanging out and playing games but you'll see what that's all about later on. As you can see, I've moved the bed into the center of the room and it's floating out a little bit from the wall and it just means that you can get those breezes coming over the bed and it seems to be the right place for it now. I've got a bunch of accessories that I'm pulling together here. I've got some bedside tables. I decided to go mismatched. 
our creaky old dresser that was kind of rickety before. I've put lots of coats of white paint and now it's just nice and low on that wall. It's the ideal height and length for this room so that's looking a lot better. Now it's gonna be about bringing in those turquoise accents because I have all of my blues. I've got lighting that's in progress, but wait till you see the shade. This place is just gonna feel like a fabulous summer's day. Okay, here's a question for you. What is this? Well, I know it's a tea towel, but it can be a pillowcase and a really easy one to make, even if you don't like to sew. Just take a standard size tea towel, fold it two sides together, right sides together, then run a line of stitching all along one end and along the side, leaving one end open. Now the great thing about using a tea towel is all the ends are already turned under, so there's no finishing necessary. Then you end up with a really neat, crisp pillowcase. You'll need to use a 13 by 18 inch pillow. It's the ideal size. And then you have an easy, breezy summer pillow. For our Mediterranean-inspired escape, we wanted to add accessories that match the room not only in color but in feel. Something soft and natural and soothing to the eye. Enter Michelle Kosoy, a ceramic artist who recognizes the beauty of simplicity with cream and blue ceramics. Michelle's pieces employ a unique technique of stamping to create these perfectly embossed designs. My husband and I did a sculpture in clay our first date, and that was the very first day that I touched clay, believe it or not. I was in fine art school doing an art history degree, and I had a hard time putting to canvas what was in my head because I didn't have the technique. I could copy anything, but I couldn't put my images that I had in my head on paper. So clay was just a natural, a natural venue for me. It was three-dimensional. I could do what I saw in my head. This collection was inspired by trips to Nepal and the Orient, combined with the soft feel and textures created by the stamps. The process is similar for each piece, but every one is different. A lot of the stamps that I use are woodblock print stamps for fabric making in India and Nepal. And when I was there, I just loved the look of them, the texture, the feel, and I bought a dozen and brought them home, not even thinking, I actually put them on my tables and sat with them decoratively and hung them on the walls. And then I was working in a different way then with clay and doing a lot of painting and drawing and scraffito. So um, one day I just took it off the side table and brought it to the studio and, you know, worked from there. Um, after you stamp it, I often flare the edges with little bits of clay here and there and give it some fluting to you know, manipulate them so they're all different. So they all come from the same hand and the same feel, but they are all, all one of a kind handmade pieces. Once we've stamped it, we dry them out really slow. We put them through the kiln once to biscuit and then we glaze them after and put them through again. The reason I use the palette that I do is because I let the stamps and the form work for itself. The stamps are so beautiful, I don't want to mute that with bold, bright colors. It's not my aesthetic. I think that my work works well in any kind of environment, any style, because it's so simple in a way. The color keeps it simple. The pattern is more sculptural, and it's very, I mean, cream is just a beautiful accent to any kind of room. Spending time in a summer cottage or a beach house is about having the luxury of time, and that means being able to pursue some of the more relaxed pleasures in life, and that is game playing. So what I've decided to do is to make a checkerboard, it could also be used as a chessboard, that will go in this bedroom. Now what I've done is I've started with a table that I found at an antique market, and uh, it was a great price, and I just wasn't so fond of the color, but you know me, anything can always be painted as long as it has good bones. Okay, now I've finished painting this whole table. It's starting to look really chalky white and sort of a rich creamy color and I think it's gonna be terrific. It's on to the men now and I decided that this should all be about using whatever you can find. So I took a walk on the beach and I found two different colors of stones predominantly. There is the dark sort of charcoal gray and then uh, a more, these almost have a more olive -y, uh, green undertone to them. So I've decided to make these my men. And I'm just going to use some latex urethane 
and brush it on top of the stones, which will bring out the color a little bit and it'll also give them sort of a protective coating on it and it'll give them a little bit of sheen. I'd also recommend if you're gonna put this little coating of urethane on, you'll wanna do it on something like a sheet of aluminum foil, like I have it on, because if you do it on top of newspaper, the stones will get stuck to the newspaper and you don't want that. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to create the checkerboard. What I did was first I taped off a 16 inch square. Checkerboards are eight by eight squares. And I am using a two inch wide painter's masking tape, which means that eight squares across times two inches gives me 16 inches. So I've got a 16 by 16 inch square. And then for the first step, just to line it all up, I've laid out eight strips of tape all side by side, and now that I've done that, I'm gonna pull back every other piece of tape. This is gonna be a two-step process. So I've pulled off every other piece of tape, and now I'm gonna go back and do the exact same thing in the other direction. Okay, I'm gonna leave that last one open and I am going to pull back every other piece of tape. That's great. So, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Sarah, that's only half a checkerboard. Once I've painted all these, I will pull it off and then I will tape over in the opposite pattern and that will create the remaining squares that I need in between. For the color of the checkers, I don't want anything that's gonna to be too bold. And we're going with a palette of blues. I want this to be a little bit uh, more subtle in the room. So I've mixed up, this is just sort of a light uh, gray, greeny blue that will complement all the stones. And I'm just gonna roll it over, covering off all of my squares. To make your second set of squares, all you need to do is tape over the squares that you've already created. And you'll want to do that in both directions. Okay, so I'm just peeling this back. I'm just giving you a little bit of a preview just to prove to you that my checkerboard pattern works. The lines are perfectly straight. I love the color combination. Just to protect it, I will use two coats of a latex urethane over top of the whole table and uh, because we wanna make sure that it lasts. Although, this is just such a soft effect and I know that it is gonna become a whimsical but useful addition to the bedroom. Does sunlight piercing a cobalt blue glass bottle conjure up images of magical potions and mysterious alchemists? Well, these pretty bottles may be decorative delights now, but they originally contained all types of medicine. They're not a top dollar item unless you come across one that was hand blown. Then you've got a rare find. Nowadays, cobalt blue glass is still used for medicinals, especially natural remedies and cosmetics. That gorgeous blue isn't just a sparkling visual delight, it also protects the delicate herbal extracts inside. Since I made the checkerboard, I figure I get to take the first move. You can see my board is completed, all of the men. You can really tell the difference between the two teams. And I think this is such a great spot to play an afternoon game of checkers. We've got it nestled in this south window. The windows are open, the drapes are sort of blowing in the breeze, and it's just such a cozy spot. And this whole room feels like the epitome of summer. It's all about blue. As you can see, I've decided to go with really simple curtains. They're made of heavy white twill, it's sort of like a white denim, and I've put them on these swing arm rods so they act just like shutters and they couldn't be simpler. You'll also notice that I've decided to go with a round mirror. It sort of gives a porthole effect and it makes you feel like you're on a ship because that's what I think of when I see all of these shades of blue working together. All the textiles that I bought have been scattered throughout the room. Here's the antique ECAT panel and it's just draped sort of like a 
throw over the back of this chair. Then there's the batik bedspread. And I think that even in summer, you have a chilly night and you need to be able to pull something up. And this just has such strong colors. It really is our two shades of blue. It's sort of cobalt verging on indigo, which happens to be the same color as the wall. And then a softer, more lakeside color of blue. Then there's the sarong that I got when I was traveling and it is bold, bright colors. Another panel here is trimmed with beads and just gives a really breezy look to a table here. And that's an idea that you might want to incorporate. It allows you to change the look for the different seasons and also very inexpensive. We've got some accessories with blue stripes on them. We've got one of the ceramic pieces that came from the artist we went to visit. And I just love it. It's got a pile of turquoise beads. For bedside lamps, we went simple. Bit more of a modern look here, and it's a clear glass vase base just with a simple white shade on it. We didn't want anything to seem too fussy. We just want it so clean lined everywhere through here. For the lights on the ceiling, you'll see now what I chose. It's just a Chinese paper shade, and these round shades always make me think of summer, and I love the way they blow in the breeze. They just sort of move. We've actually put ours on a dimmer so that when you turn it right down, it looks like a harvest moon. Our dresser's been all spiffed up with some fresh white paint. We've created a changing area with our folding screen here with enough room to get in behind, stack up some towels, ready to go off to the beach. And our hooks are hung all along this wall. We've got uh, an old Mennonite bench painted bright turquoise in its original paint color. And you can use that to put luggage on top, put shoes underneath, and all of of our hooks across the wall so everything has a place to go. The amazing thing about this room is that summer living couldn't be easier and it's all about everything we love about blue. I'm Sarah Richardson and I hope you'll join me next time on Room Service. Welcome to Room Service, I'm Sarah Richardson. Are you looking to express your inner sense of sophisticated urban style? Then here's a plan to give a downtown apartment uptown appeal. With mid-century touches like leather, marble and steel, an inspiring look at the design of sensuous flatware, and some sparkle for intimate dining. We'll turn this place into a modern mix of the classics and it's only on room service. about it, this is a typical apartment like many you've seen before. It's in a high-rise building in a great downtown location. It has vertical blinds and typical sort of 1980s broadloom. Those are two of the first things that we're planning on changing. What are some of the good things? Well, it gets lots of light and it's a fairly standard layout. In fact, it's quite similar to many of the new loft and condominium developments that we see going up all over the city. So what we're going to do here is we are going to bring it up to date and we're going to make it sleek and sophisticated. The first thing we're definitely going to do is pull up the carpet. Hopefully, hopefully the floors underneath will be in good condition, but you never know. Another thing we're going to do is paint. Definitely paint is in order here. What I think right now I'd really enjoy is something to make it look a little bit bigger, something calm, something soothing, something that also makes the room appear a little bit larger. The color is sort of a taupey, coffee, mocha kind of color. And I think that it would seem larger and more open if we chose a more serene palette. I'm thinking more along the gray tones. We're going to take inspiration from a couple of classic modern pieces that our client has acquired over the years. We have a pair of Mies van der Rohe Barcelona chairs. We have a really nice teak credenza here that holds the television and a set of stacking dining chairs. Other than that, basically everything is up for grabs and headed out to be replaced 
by sleeker lines, cooler colors, and a more contemporary feel. We're going to address the dining room, of which right now there is none. There's just the stacking chairs. So I think a table is key. I'm thinking somewhat sparkly. You'll see what I mean later on. Definitely new drapes, a whole bunch of touches, keeping in mind overall that at some point a new home or condominium or loft may be purchased, in which case it's always good if you're a renter to stay mobile and be able to take it all with you. Sleek and modern, crisp and classic, that's our approach to contemporary interiors. As clear and refreshing as the classic cocktail, neat and sophisticated is the only way to go. We are adding a nod to the past. Elegant, classic designs on modern life add depth to our scheme with elements of black that are anything but basic. And finally, we'll introduce a touch of polish for added sparkle as we go for a dynamic mix of old and new that's all about the best of urban style. Sometimes furnishing a room involves hitting the streets to see what you can find and pulling it all together. Other times it's more about coming up with a creative vision and then seeking out the artisans that can help make it become a reality. That's where I am right now. I'm at a custom metal fabrication shop and if you can imagine it, they can build it. I'm standing here beside this is a light fixture that's actually on its way to a chic boutique in New York City. It's a little large for our space, but it's reminiscent of a bird's nest and it's all, it looks sort of just like spun metal and it's absolutely amazing. Now let's go inside and see what they've done for us. That's it, those are my tables. They look terrific. Thank you. Now tell me what these are made of. Uh, a cold rolled steel, which is a, a finer, a finer version of, of this regular hot rolled. Okay, because normally when I think of any sort of metal work, it's sort of got this, is this a, what is this coating that's on it? It's like a scale or a slag. It's a result of the uh, steel cooling quickly. Whereas this is rolled when it's cold, and so it's, it's dimensionally a lot more stable. These edges are flatter and they're not as round on the corners here. Now I should just explain what these are. I have uh, asked Calvin to make me these tables. They are going to go on either end of our sofa. We've ordered a custom sofa and I was not able to find what I was looking for and I wanted something that was a little bit deeper than it was wide so that it would sort of hug in underneath the arm and we wanted something with a really clean line. So. Kelvin, when I think of ironwork, normally, I think of sort of the rough welded joints, all that. This looks more like stainless steel. What's sort of the difference between them? In terms of price? Yeah, is there a difference in price or the what's the advantage? stainless steel will be at least three or four times more. The material itself is worth more money. Wow. So okay. if you work with the cold rolled steel and treat it just like stainless, the result is that uh, it's, it's much less expensive because because you're not paying for that all that stainless steel. And we just use the same equipment that you use on stainless steel and you get that nice line, right. that nice line finish. And it's actually got more of a pewter effect as opposed to stainless, which can be a little sparkly. And then is there anything that's done to protect the finish? Lacquer on top, uh, it's, it's really the, the best choice and uh, that'll stand up in a, like in a, in a house in someone's sort of a controlled environment, right. as opposed to outside, okay. for years and years. We need a dining room table. Would you make me a dining room yes, table in the I'd same be, style? Yes, I'd love okay, to. But I guess we'd have to use something a little thicker, yep. wouldn't we? Yep, every, every size is available, so, uh, you Sky's know. Sky's the limit? It is, rounds, uh, rectangulars, squares. Okay, now I know neither of these aren't the biggest challenges for you. Have you ever met a challenge you couldn't you couldn't tackle mm, yet? No, I don't think so. Nothing okay, I'm going to have to dream up yeah, something yeah, Nothing for you. I'll admit. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Calvin. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about what happens when you pull up wall-to-wall -wall broadly. Well, sometimes you pull it back and find that the floors underneath aren't in great condition. Not the case here. We were so lucky. The floors underneath are gleaming golden oak parquet. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, if this apartment was actually a condominium and it was owned, I might actually recommend sanding and restaining these floors just to give it a more modern appeal, maybe in a dark walnut or in an ebony finish. However, this is a rental apartment, so we are gonna take what we've got, we are gonna be happy about it, they look great. Another thing is this place is so much brighter than it was. We took down those vertical blinds, that was the first thing I wanted to see come down. And as you can see, now we have bright daylight coming in. 
in. This is what I really love about drapes. The advantage of drapes is they're either open or they're closed, which means that during the daylight hours when privacy is not an issue, they can be left wide open to give it this airy feeling. Now, on that line of an airy feeling, I've sampled some paint colors over here. Always a good idea to sample your paint colors in advance. I'm going with a sort of smoky blue range. I've started out here, this is a silvery gray. Then I have another color here which has a little bit more green in it. And a third color which I'm thinking about using as an accent color which is more of that smoky, steely blue. As far as the dining room goes, we had some cracking problems on the wall. The paint was all peeling off. It was due to condensation on the concrete because that's what the walls are made of. So I put on a new sheet of drywall over top so that we'll have a good foundation for something I'm planning to do there, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. When I'm all done here, you are gonna believe me when I say that you can create dramatic impact without spending a fortune. There's nothing like a trip to the hardware store to make the details of a room come together. In this case, I went in search of hardware for the doors and I found it. As you can see, we have the same knobs that are on all these closet doors and they're definitely a little bit outdated. So what I found as a replacement was a brushed steel lever style handle, which is a little bit more contemporary than what's here now. If you're gonna replace your door knobs, you need to make sure that the style you choose comes in both a passage set, which has a handle on both sides, and also as a dummy, which may go on the closet doors. In this case, it's gonna cost me about $100 to replace all of the hardware, which is definitely worth it because this brushed steel element will add a touch of shimmer to our back wall of closets. Even if your space is devoid of a dining room, it doesn't mean you should be lacking in dining style. Industrial designer and modernist Helen Kerr is just the person to help. Her flatware collections, well known all over North America for their unique style as well as their affordable prices, stemmed from Helen's need to create clean, pure, yet functional objects for everyday life. I began uh, working as an industrial designer because I was very interested in the idea of art and technology put together. And the more I explored um, both of those aspects of design, the more interested I became in really modernism. Um, being able to have clean, sculptural, pure shapes that functioned really, really well. So almost all of the work that we do, whether it's furniture or flatware or uh, even something very technical, has that feeling to it. it. It's as simple as it's possible to be, given the materials and the processes that are involved. Once we've researched, we begin to conceptualize, which means that we uh, begin uh, creating objects, but at a very much an idea stage. And so we make um, hand-drawn sketches, computer-drawn sketches, and then we model things up in foam and wood models that we sculpt out before we actually get to the final uh, piece. And that's a way for us to practice and see whether or not it's going to be an appropriate solution. Almost all of the products that we design have a very sculptural quality to them, and so form is something that's really important to me. Um, anything that fits well into your hand, if it's going to be used um, in your hand, it, it needs to have that kind of very biomorphic shape. And so almost all of the things that we do, in some way, reference a human body. They've got connections like the webs in your fingers, and they're very rarely something that's just a geometric assemblage of parts, they're, they're much more fluid looking. From a technical point of view, we have to be very, very concerned about how much material is used and what the uh, capabilities of the factory are. And so that, that's always the piece that's hidden in, in the objects that you use every day is sometimes they, they look the way they do because that's the only way to make them. I hope when people see the cutlery that they just can't help themselves but pick it up. They're the kind of things that you just want to stroke and, and feel. They're less objects than they should be. They're very intimate. When you, when you take cutlery, you put it into your mouth, and there's, there's nothing that could be more intimate than putting something into your mouth. So it should be something that feels good. 
The painters have finished painting all of the walls, the ceiling, all of the smoky blue tones have turned out really well. Now I've taken over and I'm starting to apply a decorative treatment to this accent wall. This is the wall in the dining room and the dining room table that I've had made is made of an inch and a half square burnished steel piping and it's all welded together. So what I wanted to do is create a square technique on this wall. I'm gonna do it using silver leaf. So inch and a half squares of silver leaf will just create a little bit of accent on this wall. What I've done is I've started out by spacing my squares 16 inches apart, both horizontally and vertically. And what I've done is I've run a continuous band of tape from top to bottom. Now that's to make sure that all of my little squares end up staying perfectly lined up. This is really important when you're doing a decorative technique. I'm using low tack painter's masking tape and I started by measuring it all out with a measuring tape and a level and a pencil. So this is one of those things that is nine tenths preparation and one tenth execution. The next step is to start applying the leaf. I'm using, this is water-based gold leaf sizing and it looks like thinned out white glue and I'm just gonna apply it using a small foam brush. I wanna make sure before applying it that there's no place for that leaf sizing to uh, bleed underneath my tape line because I wanna make sure that these silver squares have nice sharp edges on them and I'll just simply apply a little bit of the sizing on the inside of that square. Very simple. Okay, so that's the last square and now the next step is to just let this dry for about 20 minutes. It will become tacky and it'll stay tacky for about 24 hours. So if you were doing a large room, you'd have lots of open working time. I'll set this aside and clean that up. I'll let this dry and then I'll peel back the tape and we'll be ready to move on to silver leaf. Silver leafing is sold in packages of 25 sheets that are six inches square. Now that's a lot larger than I need considering the fact that my squares are only one and a half inches. So I am going to just cut my squares into quadrants. So this allows me just to work with a much smaller size and I'll have far less waste. Now I think these you can just feel it, the squares are a little bit tacky, which means I'm ready to go. Lay the leaf in place. One sheet at a time. Over the sizing. Flipping back as you go. And you can use your brush. You wanna try not to touch it with your fingers because if you do, it may tarnish over time. Now that I've got my leaf attached to the sizing, the last step is to make sure that you burnish it in place and then you can use your brush and it'll take off any of the excess. This is sort of like the Las Vegas stage of the project where you have silver dust flying everywhere. finished removing all the loose silver by burnishing with the brush, I'm wiping over it with a soft rag just to make sure there's no little bits of silver left on the wall. At this point, if you wanted to protect it, you could cover it with a coat of urethane. I am gonna leave it just as it is because I like the mat of the wall against the sheen of the silver. And now that this accent wall is completed, you can see that it adds a graphic modern complement of steel and silver. 
Izamu Noguchi was a prolific Japanese-American sculptor. He designed stage sets, plazas, playgrounds, landscapes, and furniture. But Noguchi may be best known for his Akari light sculptures. These functional icons of mid-20th century design play with luminous form and symmetry in many ways. The handmade paper shades with their bamboo ribbing may be perched on delicate metal feet, pinned to the wall, or suspended. Exquisitely understated and a little bit whimsical, it's no wonder Akari lights are still in production and on the A-list for design aficionados. My work here is all done so I thought I'd kick back, enjoy the view and the atmosphere. But I can't exactly take credit for everything in this room, though I am quite pleased with how it's turned out. Michael actually had a number of neat pieces to start with. The Barcelona chairs were his, he owned them already. Same goes for the Wassily chair, another chair in chrome and leather and even the dining room chairs. All it took was a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of vision to pull this place together. First off, I think it looks so much larger now that that old broad loom is gone and the vertical blinds are also gone and replaced. Now there was a bit of discussion about the paint color when it first happened because there was some question about whether it might be a little bit on the baby blue side. The colors weren't necessarily working when they first went on and they were kind of, it was, it was hard to tell what color it was. It's always important to see how the color looks when everything comes together instead of jumping to a decision too soon before you've seen everything. You have to relax with the process. If you trust a designer to, to do something in your space, you have to just kind of go with it and eventually you, you sort of clue into what they're trying to pull together for you. I'm pleased to report that now that the room has come together, it just acts as a soft sort of gray-blue backdrop rather than appearing baby blue. Now, about the sofa, this is a new sofa with a much lower line than the one that was originally here. We really needed to go with something that had a lower arm and more of a horizontal, low feeling to it, rather than something boxy, really to complement these classic modern pieces that were already here. You'll remember those tables that I picked up when I went out shopping, and now I've added a slab of marble on top of them. The marble is actually something that I rescued from an old hearth in front of a fireplace that was removed. All I did was have them cut down and repolished, and they are stunning. So great that in fact, I believe they're Michael's favorite piece in the room. I love the shiny marble top and the fact that there aren't too many striations in it. So you really do see like a lot of white on the, on the stainless steel. It looks fantastic. Now, if you ask me what my favorite piece is, I'm gonna take you over to take a look at the dining room. The best part about this, I think, is the accent wall with the little silver leaf squares on it. I just love the way that the silver catches the light no matter what time of day it is. And the benefit of this space is that we've really created a functional dining room out of a space that was unused before and found a great home for these chairs. They're set off underneath a glass top table made by the same people who made our side tables. I love those so much, I decided to just keep going on the theme. It seems to all be about square proportions in this room. So we've gone with a larger steel and then it's topped with a 3 8 thick glass tempered tabletop for safety. Above it, yet another square, a hanging Noguchi lamp suspended on a stainless steel pole. And when the light is on in the evening, it just really creates a warm glow. What an incredible effect. It's ready for entertaining. There's just one hit of circle that we added to help soften out all the rest of the space, and that is the cart. Again, it is more of a modern line. It's got a combination of chrome and three black shelves on wheels. This makes it an ideal piece for entertaining it can be used as a serving piece, it can be pulled over to be used as a side table, and it just complements all the pieces in the room. Well, now that we're finished, we've created a really stark contrast of the black and the chrome, of the cream and the charcoal. It's subdued, it's cosmopolitan, and most importantly, it's chic. I'm Sarah Richardson, and I hope you'll join me next time on Room Service.